The lines were constantly changing this season, but I'm going to give it to you straight with today's analysis. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Today, we are running through the. It's not the second line. It is a line of players <laughs> that were once assembled together at some point. Uh, so we're going to talk about Kadri's first year in Calgary, Nick Ritchie being traded, and Dylan Dubé's phenomenal breakout season. But before we do that, please remember to subscribe to Locked on Flames for free on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it is available. We're here for you, your team, every day. Like I said, we're switching up the evals a little bit. If you listened to the first episode, or I guess the episode where I did the first lines, it was very easy to kind of <laughs> navigate that line. But I feel like it, things were just constantly changing. And it, it like I can't go through it and evaluate nine players that played on the second line throughout the season. So we're just going to kind of run through the list of uh, forwards, then defensemen, and then goaltending because it's just it's so much easier to do it that way than try to uh, piece together episodes based on blender line. Let's talk about Nazem Kadri. Nazem Kadri was a free agent acquisition, and it was a big one. He was a big, big free agent signing. Not only because of his career year in Colorado and just winning the cup, but also. The, the money. The money was a lot. It's it's not it's not a cheap deal. In fact, it is I at seven seven for seven. Uh seven by seven rather. Sorry. But um yeah, this was a big acquisition. And this is the thing. You are always going to overpay uh during free agency. And that's just that's life. You know, that is the name of the game. And this felt like the perfect perfect fit for Kadri um, because it added that one two punch uh, with with the depth another center that could produce and make solid plays and execute them and knew what it took or knew what it takes to win so he could bring that experience and quite literally just like the perfect guy for Daryl Sutter's system and I remember all summer long everyone was like he already signed with the Islanders that's why we haven't heard anything about it never happened he signed with Calgary and you know I think that the expectation was high but no one truly had this expectation of him remaining a point per game player especially with him coming off the Stanley Cup uh that's a very long summer short off season and he had an injury so I think he said at one point he couldn't even tie his own skate from how swollen his thumb was. So, you know, obviously coming into this a little bit banged up and there there was just so much hope for him coming into Calgary. The stars felt like they were finally aligning and the pain and the loss of Matthew Kachuk and Johnny Gaudreau leaving wouldn't be as felt wouldn't be so heavily felt in the offense. And I do have to say, nothing aligned that way. <laughs> Newsflash, in case you were in a coma and this is the first Flames news you are consuming since waking up, nothing worked out the way any of us thought or expected it to. It wasn't anyone's, like, one particular person's fault. It was kind of, you know, the puzzle pieces, right? But... He had 24 goals and 13 of those coming at five on five. So, I again, I'm not bothered by the production. This he had, he didn't really. He had four less goals than he did, again, uh, than his year 
or previous year in Colorado. So it's not like there was such a significant drop off, like with Huberto, where you're just like, oh my God, what are we doing? Is this the right move? Is this contract what we wanted? Are we sure we should be doing this? What does concern me is the streakiness. I think he had four or five goals over the last 30 some odd games. And that that's not good. You know, the only person that was consistent in goal scoring this season, it felt like was Tyler Toffoli. You knew that when he had the puck on his stick, he was either hitting the net or hitting the back of the, net or the post. And Kadri's shooting percentage was also down um, a considerable amount as well. He it was uh, 14% in his season with Colorado, and it was down to, I believe, a 9% this season and you know you you can't score goals if you're not shooting the puck and we know that the flames are just a team that constantly shoot 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 so it's you want to see more execution of the goals <laughs> of the shooting it's you know breaking it down like that it makes it sound so obvious and i never want y'all to think like I'm dumbing things down to a point where, um, you know, like, I, I think you're dumb. No, this is just the nature of the game. You have to do the obvious things to get those results, to see success. And like, you're not going to see success in players when you're putting, especially like faster players, you're not going to see success by putting a slow old man on their line. And I feel like that happened with Padre, with Lucic being on the line. And at one point, Huberto was on that line as well. And Huberto was on his off wing. You're not setting your center up for success when you do it that way. You're not really giving him much to work with. And again, things just have to change. This this is the common theme, the reoccurring theme. Things have to change. You cannot go into next season with bare minimum changes and say, oh, this is great. You know, we're going to run it back. We're going to do whatever we need to do. And that's that. But coming up next, we are going to talk about something slightly more positive because Dylan Dubé had himself one heck of a year and it deserves to be celebrated. But before we do that, I do want to take a minute to talk about game time. It, it's time. If you are looking for playoff hockey tickets, concert tickets, theater tickets, game time is your place to go. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't have to be stressful. With game time, it's the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee so you can stop stressing over tickets and start getting hyped for all of the fun you'll have. I will be using game time when I uh, buy Taylor Swift tickets again. We're, we're running it back. We are doing, we did Vegas. We did, uh, we're doing Boston. Let's figure out somewhere else to go, right? And with flash deals and last minute tickets, game time will get me there and they will get you there. So snag the tickets without the stress. Thanks to game time. Download game time uh, on the app store today and create an account and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And thank you everyone for hanging out with me today on Locked On Flames. Make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode wherever you get your podcasts. Dylan Dubé, most improved flame by far. He ran away with this title. I feel like by February, or even probably a little bit before that, he was ready to answer the calls, to step up and prove himself. This was his first full season played. Anyone in Calgary, if, if you're rooting for one person, it should be Dylan Dubé. He's a local kid, had a fantastic season, and, you know, in 2020... He had to decline going to Worlds because of a concussion. And could he receive an invite this year? I'm not entirely sure um, if he confirmed it or not in his with the media interview. But um, if oh, 
he established himself wherever he needed to be in that lineup. He was just ping pong balling all around and he answered the call every single time. He had 19 goals and a new career high with 45 points. We need to see more of this. I selfishly want to see more of this because I never, ever expect him to be a 100-point player. I don't. I just, you know, I think in Calgary, there's just kind of this lower ceiling for almost everyone until they can figure something out magically. But if you can get him to be between a 50 to 60 point player, you're going to have something consistent and something that is worthwhile and worth investing in. And what we need to see more of now is letting him blossom. What is his off-season training looking like? What is he committed to? Does he want to, you know, play more of those top six minutes? Or is he okay kind of being that versatile guy that just kind of plugs in wherever the coach seems fit because he does where he succeeds wherever you need him. And I think that that's something that maybe flew under the radar a bit this year, especially after he came off the first line. He, he did uh, jump to or slide to, I guess fourth line because he was struggling with productivity and just not producing at that top line level and the where he needed to be. And there were quote unquote better options for that, that spot. And, you know, he, he took that personally <laughs> and made it his job to go out there and score and make his presence felt on the ice. And I want to see more of this. I want to see not just from him, but from every player in Calgary. Him and Mangiapane kind of came up together at the same time. And I, they they have a fun, uh, friendly relationship. And there was actually a really nice interview done, I believe, by the Flames uh, website about how they go back and forth and how they're just so competitive with each other. But it's not in like this, I'm coming for your job kind of way. It's like a competitiveness so you make each other better. And I think that that's great to see. I think that every player really needs to have more of this grit and tenacity that Dylan Dubé has. Dubé goes out there every night and does what he needs to do. He isn't someone that falls behind uh, and just stays there. He find you know, he'll, he, a coach does something to hold him accountable and he, he's okay. Oh my God. He's woken back up. That is not always something you see sometimes players just get comfortable and then they slip and they stay there because it took too much work to stay at that level and if a player doesn't want to stay at that level and there's someone else who can perform whatever I think that you know the expectations were shattered for Dubé this year I think that he I I I don't know I, I don't know if he was having his mini wheats for breakfast or what it was but you know, he looked better. He looked like a stronger skater. He looked, uh, not that he's like beefy or bulky, but he looked like he had put on a little bit of muscle and he was still able to move at a decent speed. So I want to see him continue to step up in these, you know, into these roles that he can clearly participate in. It's not this wild fantasy to say, yeah, Dylan Dubé can, like, slot in on that first line for, like, five games while, you know, Huberto slides down to take over because so-and-so is out or we're, we're switching things up. Dubé is someone that, again, can plug and play. You can put him anywhere, and I think that that is just such – it's one of those intangibles – in hockey that you know you don't there's no there's no chart I can't quantify this I can't put it into numbers but I can tell you that if this kid is asked to go play on the first line at the start of the game and he has to move down to the third line because you know we're switching things up to kind of cycle the offense he, he does it and he does it well and we again the flames need to see more of that otherwise you're just going to have a bunch of individually minded in people and that's not how success works. 
But coming up next, we are going to talk about one of my favorite trade deadline acquisitions, Nick Ritchie. And thank you, everyone, so much for hanging out with me today on today's episode of Locked on Flames. You can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto, and we can always talk about this offseason or whatever you want. So <laughs> I remember where I was when I found out Nick Ritchie was, was traded to, for his brother. I, I was standing in my kitchen. Uh, just like I was with the Tyler DeFoley trade, right? I'm, I'm always in my kitchen doing something, minding my own business, right? But you don't trade for Nick Ritchie or bring in any. <laughs> you don't bring in a Ritchie brother and expect them to just be like an insane goal scorer, right? Nick Ritchie, I will say, did have a great run in – uh, Toronto, where he was just rejuvenated, brought back to life after his time in Boston. <laughs> but swapping Brett and Nick Ritchie was so funny because to me, Nick Ritchie is just like a slightly more expensive version of Brett Ritchie. Um, he's just, he's there. He is there to take up space. He is there to be in front of the net and have a solid net front presence He scored 13 goals this year, and four of those came on the power play. You have to just kind of accept that these are what these players are. They're brought in to, you know, maybe add something to a special teams unit to just fill a slot. If he's scratched, he's scratched. It's not the end of the world, but I don't think... I don't think Nick Ritchie was, like, a problem this season (laughs) I I don't think he was the reason the Flames lost and uh, were eliminated from playoff contention I mean like yes he didn't score in the shootout but it was player mismanagement and you know I don't think he's gonna say like yeah like the coach shouldn't have put me out there when the coach quite literally said yeah like you know, it doesn't matter if it's this person or Nick Ritchie. Like, you, you're just out there. And yes, that's true. But I don't know if Nick Ritchie should be <laughs> going out there on your in a shootout season on the line ahead of... I can't even remember who else was uh, behind him. But it was, it was not his fault. And I hope that... You know, this off season, he gets, uh, you know, there's only so much, again, a player can do and you can on- only expect so much. You have to keep your expectations realistic. You cannot go out there and tell me, like, Nick Ritchie's going to go out there and score 30 goals. If Nick Ritchie goes out there and scores 30 goals, then I- I'll just, I'll quit hosting the show because clearly I'm wrong. But there's nothing to his game where I'm like, oh, this needs improving. I think that he is just at this level. I think that he is good when he's good. You know, you get those that strong start, five goals, five games, or whatever it was once he was traded, and then he cools off, and then he heats up again, and then he's traded because they know he's going to cool down again. It is a cycle that you see with Nick Ritchie. And if you look at uh, his time in Anaheim, same thing, right? Uh, I don't, I don't have a problem with Nick Ritchie. I think that he is, you know, a solid net front presence for this team. And he takes up the space that that's needed. You know, you do what you got to do. But thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. We will continue analyzing this forward group as we roll into the month of May. And we are 20 minutes from puck drop in Game 7 of the Panthers and Bruins. So if you don't get an episode tomorrow, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. There will be an episode tomorrow regardless of how my Bruins do. 
Uh, <laughs> every time Matthew Kachuk does something, I'm like, if only Brad Tree Living had, had locked him back up, locked him up back in 2018. He wanted to sign that long-term deal, but destiny wasn't calling. So thank you everyone for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and Nick will be joining us later this week. You can follow me on Twitter, on the screen, at Jess Belmosto. Make sure you are following Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts, free on YouTube. Come talk to me. Who was, who ha- who was your standout uh, forward? this year on the flames because there, there might've been two more that I think I can think of, but I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great rest of your weekend and go flames.